when you start working on this Terraform project. Four things that I want you to always remember. And those four things are, at least this is how I learned Terraform. So you need to remember these four things. And when you work on the project in your account, you will hear me saying it over and over and over again. And the reasons why I'm saying it over and over and over again is because I want you to just know what they are. Because I feel like if you know what they are, it would make life easy for you. I actually spelled this wrong. So these are the four things. And these are resource type, argument, attribute, and variables. In Terraform, when you start your Terraform project, you don't there'll be you will learn other things as you go, but starting out, try to remember these four things. Not even try, you must re remember these four things. So when I say resource type, resource type is what you are saying here. When you are using Terraform to create a resource, for example, you want to create a VPC. There is a resource type to create a VPC. You want to create an EC2 instance. There's a resource type to create an EC2 instance. For any type of resource you are trying to create, that resource will have its own specific resource type. That is how Terraform knows what type of resource you are trying to create. So if you look in our Terraform configuration here, to create a VPC here, we start by specifying resource and this is the resource type to create a VPC. Terraform provides this to you. That does not change. So that is the resource type. It is something that would not change. You can't make it up yourself. Terraform provides that to you. Then maybe I should even put another one here. Uh, so that is the resource type. Then the next one I want you to remember is reference name. So when you specify resource and the type of resource you want to create, in your Terraform configuration, you have to give that resource a name and that is the reference name. So here you can see I gave it a name VPC. So this name just allows you to be able to reference this resource throughout your Terraform script. As you work on it, it will make sense, but just for starting, understand what a resource type is and a reference name. Basically, anytime you are trying to create any resource, you must give that resource a reference name. So you can see for every resource we have here, they all have their own unique reference name. And the reference name is something you make up. You can call it John, Jump, whatever you want to call it. You, you have the flexibility to call it any name you want. But basically, typically what I do is for every resource I'm trying to create, I name the reference name close to the resource name. So you can see here where they have AWS underscore VPC as the resource type. The reference name I gave it is VPC. So I just removed the AWS. I think in Terraform, they don't allow you to use the AWS underscore. So I just call it VPC. You can see here for the resource type where here I'm creating an, an internet gateway. I called my reference name internet gateway. So that way, when I'm looking at it, I know what type of resource I'm creating there. So that is the reference name. It is something, it is a name you give to the resource you are trying to create in your code. And that name, you call it anything you want. The next one I want you to remember is arguments. And arguments are these things you see under your resource. These are called arguments. And I will explain it to you um, shortly. So you guys know that in the management console, in the management console, if you want to create a VPC, for example, what that resource is creating. If I click create VPC here, right here, this is if you want AWS to build all the subnets and public and private subnets for you and you put all that information here. But we build our VPC as we go. So yeah, if you select VPC only, you give your VPC a name, then you specify your public IPv4 CIDR block, which is here. You can say 10.0 whatever, right? Then you can either specify if you want your VPC to have an IPv6 CIDR block. We don't typically add one. Then you specify your tenancy, which is always default and tags, right? This is what AWS requires you to specify to create a VPC. So basically what I'm telling you is that when you are trying to use Terraform to create a VPC, it is the same exact thing you are doing. So if I can move my Terraform code, where is that code? So let me see if I can dock this next to each other. So you see here, this is the management console where we are creating a VPC, right? When you are creating a VPC, they ask you to specify your name. So in Terraform, when you tell Terraform, I'm trying to create a VPC and you have given it a reference name. What I'm telling you is that whatever you see here that you have to enter here, go and look for that in Terraform. 
So here we have name. You can see in Terraform, we add an argument name. But for this one, for the name, you can see it is tags. Even here, they are showing you it's tags. So that's why in our Terraform code, we are adding it as a name tag here. These options you are seeing here in Terraform, they are called arguments, which is why I want you to understand what argument is and don't forget it. Basically, when you are creating a resource in the management console, whatever option you see here, those options are called arguments in Terraform. So you can see here, we entered a name as this. So in my Terraform code, I can also enter as this here as a name. Then the next option we see in the management console is IPv4. You can see in Terraform, that argument is called CIDR block. Uh, whatever you enter in the management console, you can also enter that here in Terraform. Here we have IPv6, but if you didn't select IPv6 in the AWS console, you don't want it as part of your VPC configuration. You don't have to enter the argument in your Terraform code. That's why you don't see the argument here. Then the next one is tenancy. You can see here, tenancy in Terraform, the argument is called instance tenancy. And we enter default here. And in Terraform, you also enter default. Shortly, I'll show you the Terraform documentation where to get all these arguments from, but I'm just showing you that there's no difference from you creating a resource in the management console and you creating a resource with Terraform. Then the only other one that I add here that you don't see here, which this is going to be on when you create the subnet, but from you guys building your VPC manually, you understand that we always enable the DNS host name, right? But that would be after we create our VPC in the management console. But in Terraform, you will just add that argument and enable your DNS host name. You guys know I have to create my VPC first, then I go back to the VPC settings and enable the DNS host name. So basically, this is why I started you at the project in the management console first, so you can get familiar with how to create these resources. Now you are using Terraform to create it. This is what you see. You can see that everything you did here is the same exact thing you are doing in Terraform. There's no difference. Once you understand just your resource type, reference name and argument, pretty much whatever you see here is what I'm telling you to put here. This is how I learned Terraform. And one thing I'll say is the first time you work on Terraform, this is as tedious as you have to get. You have to, if you don't understand what you are doing here, you have to go in the management console, launch that same resource, look at the settings you picked to launch that resource in the management console and look for those settings as argument in your Terraform code. This argument, I'm going to show you next how to get them. Oh no, I don't think I have it here. So let me see if I, I'm always struggling looking for the Terraform documentation. So if you type the Terraform documentation here, I have it in my code. Sometimes every time I search for it, I can never find it, but I'll, I, I believe I over, I also include the link here. So let me just use the link. And if I don't have it, I'm going to include it. I don't think I included the link. So I'll add the link to the documentation, but I did put the link here. So this is the link to the Terraform documentation to create AWS resources. And for any resource you are trying to create, let's say for the example we are using is VPC. So type VPC in this filter box. Once you type VPC, you will see the name of the resources here. You can see here VPC. So when I type VPC here, because VPC falls under different resources, like some resources has VPC in it, that's why you are getting this. But typically when you type the name here, it will show up here. So you just have to look for it. So when I type VPC here, this is API Gateway V2. So if you keep scrolling down, look for the VPC section. So you can see this is VPC here and this is resource. So here, what you have to look for is the resource type to create a VPC. So you can see even under this VPC, there's different things that falls under it. But the one we are looking for is AWS underscore VPC. But typically how you would know is for any resource you are trying to create, it will be as direct as this. If you are trying to create an internet gateway, you saw it was AWS underscore internet gateway. So this is the VPC resource if you select it, right? This will bring you to the documentation for VPC. And here, you can see they have the resource type. On their documentation, they called it main, but in my, I called it VPC, which is why I say the reference name, you can call it any name you want. And here they have their argument. So what I'm trying to say is once you find the resource you are trying to create and you open that documentation, 
for every resource you are trying to create, those resources will have an argument. So here in this documentation, you can see here, there's the argument section. If you select it, it will take you to the argument section. This argument corresponds to every single option you can select for your VPC. So basically what I'm saying is that for everything I showed you in the management console that you can pick for your VPC, that you can add to, and I lost my code. So basically for, I think it's right here, yes. So basically what I'm saying is for every argument that you can add to your VPC resource, you find it under the argument section of the VPC resource. So if you are trying to create an internet gateway, you cannot pick an argument from this VPC resource and add it to the internet gateway. The internet gateway resource will also have its own argument. So once you come to the documentation for each resource type you are trying to create, there's an argument section. So what I'm saying is that once you come to that argument section, what I did the first time I was working on Terraform is in the argument section, here I know I selected a name. Then I come to the argument section of that resource and look for where they have name. Typically name is always on that tag. Then once you do that, that's how you add the argument to your resource. Then the next one is IPv4. Then here, you look here, you can see if you look here, you can see CIDR block. And if you read it, it tells you the IPv4 CIDR block for the VPC. That is how you have to do it. If you don't understand it, if this is the first time you are working on it, this is how you have to do it. It is not something you can rush through. You have to be this tedious and this detailed. And you only have to do this the first time you work on your Terraform project. I guarantee you when you finish your Terraform project, as you create more resources in AWS, you will know exactly where to go to get the information. But the first time you work on it, you have to spend this much time on it. When I, the first time I work on Terraform, I spent about two, three weeks um, working on it every day, picking each one the, way, the same way I'm showing you. So that is what um, I wanted to point out um, with this resource. So that is the next thing. That's how you get your argument. Then the next thing is attributes. Attributes are things like once you create your VPC, your VPC will have a things like an ARN, your VPC will have an ID. Those are the different things that the different things you can find under any resource you create. Those are called attributes. And attributes are important in our Terraform code because let's say here in this first resource, we created a VPC, right? Then in the next resource, we are trying to create our internet gateway but we need to specify what VPC we want to attach our internet gateway to. So that is how we would use this VPC's attribute, which is the ID of this VPC. That's what we will enter here to tell this resource, well, to tell Terraform that we are trying to attach this internet gateway to this VPC. And when you go to the documentation for each resource, just like we have the argument here, you can also see attribute reference. So what this is telling you is that when you create a VPC, these are the different attributes that will also be created with the VPC. The VPC will have an ARN, the VPC will have an ID, instance tenancy, enable DNS support, and so on. So all these different attributes, you can use it to reference back to that VPC when you need to attach other resources to the VPC. But as you work on your telephone project, it will make sense. So these are the things I want you to remember. Resource type, reference name, argument, attributes. Then the last one is variable. Variable just means that uh, maybe I can show you in my Terraform code. In my Terraform code, I'll use my VPC as a reference. When, you, when I create a VPC, remember I said that I gave it a name Aziz, right? I can do that and Terraform will create a VPC and name it as this. But let's say I don't want to hard code. This is, they call this hard coding, meaning that you are putting the exact name that you want to call something in your Terraform code. Let's say I don't want to hard code this name there, but I want to put a placeholder there that just allows me to use the same template, this, this same VPC template to create other VPCs. Because you guys know that if you put, if I put as this here, this means that when I launch this template to create another VPC, it will name that one as this too. But what if I want to name it as this John and so on? I want to create multiple VPCs out of this template. So that's why we use a variable. And how a variable works is it's just a placeholder. You can 
you create a variables.tf file and in the variables.tf file, you have variable and the name you want to call the variable. The, the name, you can call it anything you want. Then here is description and the type of data it will be. And the type of data, there's different type of data, but I don't want to go into details because I don't want to confuse you. But the most one you will run across is a string. So a string just means that this is a string, something that is in a quote. And let's say the data type that you want to enter there is a number. Then this will change to like uh, a number or something. I forgot what it's called. And sometimes the data type can be true or false. Integer. Uh, integer. Thank you. Thank you. And sometimes the data type could be true or false. And that one, the data type will be bull Boolean here. You can get all this information in the Terraform documentation. And if you need a reference to that, I can point you to where you get this. But these are things like the data types are things you will learn as you go. But just understand the main ones you'll be working with the most is a string, which anything that is in a quote is a string. Then the next one is integer number. Boolean, true or false. Boolean just means that it can be either true or it can be false. But I'll find it. There's a there's probably a reference online that shows all the different data types. I'll get it. I'll get that documentation for you and I'll send it to you guys. So that is what variable is. So basically, what I'm saying is in my Terraform code, since I want to use the variable region here. I don't want to hard code my region, so I created a variable for it so that in my actual code, I can reference that variable. But I am not using region for this VPC. What I'm using for my tag is I'm tagging my VPC by, by the project name and the environment. So if you see, it is saying var project name, var environment. And these are the variables that I've created here, project name, environment. I don't want to go too much into variables at this point, but if you need me to walk you through it, I'll walk you through it. In your Terraform project, you are filling the values yourself. So however you want to name your project, name it. If you want to tag your project, if you want to hard code it starting now, then once you finish your project, everything works. Then you want to go and add variables to certain arguments within your Terraform code, you can do that. So right now at this stage, I'm not too picky about you hard coding certain values in your resources. So that is pretty much the project. Remember, just as a refresher, what I want you guys to remember are this. Always, where as you work on your resource, always remember a resource type, reference name, argument, attributes, and those will help you build your resource.